My name is Maxine DeHart, just in case somebody doesn't know, and I'm sure there's a, some new people in the audience. And I wanted to thank all of you very, very much for coming this evening to celebrate the talented, generous citizens of Kelowna. I am City Council's appointee uh, for the Civic and Community Awards, appointed by Mayor Bazran at the first of our term. I was lucky enough also to be uh, the appointee uh, by the former mayor, um, Walter Gray. So it, it's really a delight for me to be here. So I'm going to start off um, by, I'd like to introduce uh, the mayor and the councillors that are here this evening. And I really would like you, if, when I introduce you, just stand up and wave. I think it's really important, and we've really got a lot of, um, of city officials and councillors here this evening. So, of course, Mayor Bazran. Thank you. Councillor Luke Stack. Councillor Ryan Dawn. Councillor Gail Given and Councillor Charlie Hodge. Thank you all for coming and um, supporting the awards. I'd also like to, to introduce, uh, we have several uh, city staff and managers here and it would be really nice if they sort of got up and waved too. Uh, Jim Gabriel, he's the Divisional Director, Active Living and Culture. I know Jim's here, thank you. The Civic Awards are under um, Jim's and his staff capable hands. He's the divisional director for that. Joe Curon, uh, divisional director of Civic Operations. I know you're here, Joe, because I spoke to you earlier. <laughs> Rob Main, divisional director, corporate and protective services. Thank you for coming, Rob. And Doug Gilchrist, divisional director, community planning and real estate. I'd also like um, to thank some, some people in the audience uh, who have really helped with these awards. And first of all, Amber Gilbert, who does work under the wing of Jim Gabriel. Um, Amber, where, Amber, is she there? Where, oh, there she is on the, she, you know, she always does that to me. She says, Max, I'm gonna be on your right and she's on the left, because she probably doesn't want any recognition. Amber actually is the backbone of these Civic Awards. And, yes, she is, and she works, she works tirelessly, not just during the time of her hours, but she's always working overtime on these, uh, on these awards, and I'm just really thankful for you, Amber, and, and for Jim, and, and all the staff that help you, so thank you very much. We honestly, they wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do it without her, and I know people say that, but it is, it's really the truth in my heart about that. I also uh, would like to thank all the committee members because this is a really big job. From when we start, and we will start planning right after, uh, after the event today, to the judging and the committees. And um, in your uh, program tonight, there's all the committee members. I, I really would like you to take a look because probably most of the people on these lists you know. But there are people here tonight that I'd like to recognize uh, from the steering committee. Uh, Michael Lowen, I know Michael's here tonight. Wayne Moore, Wayne Moore has been with us for over 20 years. <laughs> Ellen Bolke, she's here this evening. Ellen, where are you? Thank you. Cheryl Miller. There you are, thank you. And Don Wilkinson. So thank you all very much. I, I just feel they, they deserve special recognition and, and to be named. Um, this is our 40, 41st annual Civic and Community Awards. Uh, with Oh boy, was it ever a strong year of nominations. And that just demonstrates the dedication and the talents of the Kelowna citizens that we have here. Um, sometimes, some years, we've had to prod and push a bit because, you know, sometimes people are just a little leery of nominating someone. But this year, we had no problem with that. We, were, we had so many nominations, it was very, very difficult. And I'm very thankful for that. Um, our city is very fortunate to have a large growing number of people and businesses that want to give something back to the community. And when I say that, not only the people that are nominated and are here tonight, 
but um, the business is a give back to the community because without the sponsorship, there's no way that we can do that. And that'll, we'll be telling all the sponsors, the MCs will be doing that, but they are also in your handout in the book. And I, I really um, want everybody to look at that and see who supports their community. So from athletics to arts to environment and community service, Kelowna's quality of life is a better place thanks to all of you. And it absolutely is. I know it sounds cliche, but it's exactly what it is. So to start off the evening's festivities, um, we have something really special. I think it's very, very special. And I have the, um, the pleasure of introducing a long-standing community volunteer group uh, to come and play a few songs for us. Now, a lot of you might not know this group. You might not have heard of them, or you might, but they're called the Good Time Entertainers. And what they are is a charitable choir group. They've been performing at various venues and assisted living and care centers in Kelowna, get this, since the mid-60s. So if you do the math on our fingers, that's 50 years in our community that they've been doing this. And Amber came to me and she said, you know, she found this group and uh, what do we think? And we said, absolutely. I, I was just absolutely thrilled that they took the opportunity and they said they would come here and be with us this evening. So they're all volunteers. They perform at over 30 facilities each season, putting a smile on people's faces wherever they go. And get this also, they give over 1,200 volunteer hours a year to, to, uh, to our city. So, I'd like to write off, thank you. Thank you. They're just wonderful people and they're just delightful. So I would like to bring them on the stage and so please welcome the Good Time Entertainers. Just wait till they get settled here. They're saying hello to me as we go by. That's oh. no, I don't think you should be in the care center. She went by and said, maybe we should be in the care center. Not by the looks of you guys. You're pretty spry. So I'll just wait till you get all settled here. So the good time entertainers, these wonderful people standing to my left. Um, asked me to introduce the songs they're going to sing. Now, they have three songs that they're going to do, very, very short songs, but um, I think that you're really going to enjoy them. So the first one relates to Kelowna, City Park, and guess what? The Ogo Pogo. <laughs> How fitting for today. It's called the Whip and Poof song. Now, I'm not quite sure, but we're going to find out. The second one they're going to be singing is Hey Good Looking. We all know that. And we'd really like, they would really like the audience uh, to participate and they're encouraged to sing along. And they told me they want all of you to smile. Now we can, might, might be able to see you, but that was their instruction to me. And the third song is a very, very special song. It's a hymn that they always use to close their performances. Every performance they do, at the end they seek, they call, it's called Seek Ye First. So take it away.
I've got instructions for all of you. We have to sing along and clap and smile. Yeah, yeah okay, let's do it. I would like you to come to the mic and say your names. We would like to introduce all of these wonderful people. Thank you. Shirley Schmidt. <laughs> Beverly Allen. Marion Goldsmith. Marilyn Schramm. Eva Carr. Hi, nice to see you. Sharon Paulette. Dorothy Patterson. Nice to see you, Dorothy. Eunice Mitchell. 
Anita Laurie. Mary Smith. Sally Bonshore. Lillian Hodgson. Valerie Vammon. Ken Smith. Mike Stanway. Thank you. Joe Casper. Last but not least, Moshe Yaroski. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. Oh, that was just wonderful. I'm telling you, we have people in the community we don't even know what they're doing, and this is just a wonderful group, and I, I'm really, I'm really pleased that they could come. So I'm just about ready to get off the stage, and now everybody's saying, great, great, how long? Yeah, exactly. I, who was that, Vern? Who was clapping? <laughs> Somebody I know there. Okay, well, I have a few more things to do. So um, I'm going to introduce our MCs, and they will be your hosts for the remainder of the evening. And um, the first one, you know her from Easy Rock's Rewind afternoon show, and um, also from the pre-show The Rockets. Very, very well-known gal around town, lovely person, Shanine Carr. <laughs> and joining her, someone also that does not need a very much introduction, former sports director at CHBC TV, a current manage managing director of the Central Okanagan Sports, I know I've got it here, there it is, Hall of Fame. I knew I was gonna say something else. But on a side note, um, I wanna tell you about Pat Kennedy. Uh, Pat has also served on the Civic Awards Sports Committee, guess what, since I think it started, since it um, initiated some 30 years ago. So everyone, enjoy the show. Uh, welcome everybody and certainly a thanks to uh, Maxine. Uh, we now only have 10 minutes left to do tonight's activities. <laughs> so thanks again, Max. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let me just say a couple of opening remarks uh, before we turn this thing over and get started. Uh, Kelowna is probably one of the best places in the world to live. And, uh, and you can talk about our mountains and our lakes and uh, everything that goes with it, but it is the people that make this place so special. And that's why we're here tonight. Absolutely. We're pleased to join all of you tonight. It's the 41st Annual Civic and Community Awards, and we're here tonight to honor the outstanding achievements and contributions here in Kelowna from 2015. There are 17 award categories to recognize our city's volunteer leaders, athletic achievements, excellence in the arts, environment champions, not-for-profit organizations, and community-focused businesses. Now, as is customary before we get started the, with the awards presentations, could you all please stand now for our national anthem and turn and face the flag. It's at the side of the stage and Michael Lowen is out there somewhere and he's going to lead us all. Michael? Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love. I'm glad you're all paying attention to tonight's entertainment. You all sounded very good. <laughs> now, tonight's award recipients will notice that their honor comes with their name on a large plaque or trophy. And following this evening's uh, the presentations, these big trophies are proudly displayed at the Parkinson Recreation Center for all to see. You, of course, 
are more than welcome and encouraged to come up on stage and have your picture taken with them at the end of tonight's festivities. We'd like to take a minute to thank everyone who took the time to nominate an individual or team or organization this year. It's because of your efforts that we're able to honor these deserving people and groups in our community tonight. Throughout the evening, each of the finalists will be profiled during a presentation on the big screen. If you are one of the lucky award recipients tonight, you'll be invited to come up on stage to receive your award, get your picture taken, and make a brief acceptance speech at the mic. Yeah, brief, yes, okay. <laughs> Thanks again, Max. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in honor of the uh, 40th awards program last year, some incredible tribute videos were created and we will get to enjoy each of those tonight as we go through tonight's festivities. Every year we get to celebrate the people in our city who give of their time, their talent and treasures that help make Kelowna such a wonderful place to live. So now without further delay, let us present the first set of awards. The first two awards this evening, recognizing excellence in the arts, and are proudly sponsored by Prospera Credit Union. Our presenter for the Arts Award this evening is Angela Burnell, so we'd like to invite her to come up to do the presentation. And first up is the Teen Honor in the Arts Award. Honor in the Arts Award. The natural beauty of Kelowna has worked like a magnet to attract artists of all kinds. And as such, the valley is known and recognized for being a rich cultural oasis and was named a cultural capital of Canada. In 1986, the Kelowna and District Arts Council began acknowledging artists who make outstanding contributions to the community's cultural and artistic development by establishing the Honor in the Arts Award. Each year, the award is presented to someone who has truly made an impact on our city's arts and cultural scene, whether through their supporting of the arts or by their artistic efforts. One look at the Kiwanis Festival or the various dance festivals and children's theater groups, and it's plain to see those arts-loving apples haven't fallen far from the tree. Kelowna plays home to thousands of very talented teens who are also making waves in the artistic and cultural community. As such, in 1993, the Arts Council decided to add a second annual award the Teen Honor in the Arts for ages 13 to 19. Past winners have gone on to make headlines internationally, spreading their talent around the world and acting as ambassadors for Kelowna. Teen Honor in the Arts Award, awarded to a youth who has made an outstanding contribution in Kelowna through cultural and or artistic efforts. Sponsored by Prospera Credit Union. Teen Honor in the Arts nominee, Emily Friesen. In sports, they're called a triathlete. In the arts, they're known as a triple threat, excelling in acting, dancing, and singing the way Emily Friesen can. As a singer, she sings alto in an a cappella group. As a dancer, she not only trains and competes, but volunteers as a dance teacher at Reflections Dance Studio and has been the lead choreographer for OKM's 42nd Street Musical. And when it comes to acting, Emily has been involved in theater for many years, both on and off the stage. She was a volunteer stagehand for Kelowna Summer Theater Festival and has written, directed, and acted in her own plays with UBCO and New Vintage Theater. She was also the assistant stage manager for New Vintage's production of Dead Serious. Her acting credits include roles such as the nurse in Romeo and Juliet, Gwendolyn in The Importance of Being Earnest, and Gladys in The Pajama Game, while she co-directed. For fun, Emily took up band this year, having never played before, and within one short year plays trombone as well as anyone else in the band. Teen Honor and the Arts nominee, Lauren Meyer. When Lauren puts on her poodle socks and gillies and starts doing beats, cuts, overs, lifts, and sevens, judges take notice. Lauren is a championship Irish dancer, and in March 2015, represented Kelowna at the World Irish Dance Competition. She also competed in the North American Irish Dance Championships in July, and the Western Canadian Championships in November. Regionally, Lauren placed third in the Open Championship, winning the slip jig, and placing second in the treble reel and third in the traditional set. Lauren began dancing at the Blakey School of Irish Dance at the age of seven, and is now an assistant dance teacher there as well. 
She volunteered at the Western Canadian Irish Dance Championships and performed at many local events, including the Okanagan Military Tattoo and St. Patrick's Day in senior care homes throughout the Okanagan. Lauren also competes for both the KSS Track and Field Team and the Okanagan Athletics Club. In June, she was awarded Most Improved Female Athlete on the KSS team. This summer, she has been invited back to the renowned Studio to Stage program for Irish dancers in New Jersey. Teen Honor and the Arts nominee, Clara Swan. After studying violin since the age of three, when Clara turned nine, she decided to study singing as well. Clearly, it was a good choice, as witnessed by thousands over the past year. In January 2015, Clara was chosen as a finalist in the Quebec reality talent show Galala, and her performance aired nationally on TV. From there, it was home again for the Kiwanis Music Festival, where she earned first place in two categories and was invited to attend the BC Provincial Competition. Being involved with both Opera Kelowna and the Okanagan Youth Choir led to many performance opportunities throughout the year, from singing at St. Michael's Church to spending two weeks training for and performing in The Marriage of Figaro. Clara also became a member of the award-winning ensemble Candesca and has had many performances with them as well. In addition to singing and violin, Clara took up guitar and accompanied herself in the school's talent show. She also plays bass, studies dance, and is learning the drums. It's evident that we can look forward to hearing about Clara Swan for many decades to come. It is our pleasure to announce the 2015 recipient for the Teen Honor in the Arts is Lauren Meyer. Please come forward and accept your award. honored to have won this award. The two other finalists are both deserving of the Teen Honor and the Arts Award. I would like to thank Kelowna Secondary School for nominating me for this award. It is a great school and I am proud to be a student involved in many different parts of it. I would like to thank my dance teachers from the Blakey School of Irish Dance, Janice and Megan, for all their hard work and passion. They are the reason I fell in love with Irish dance and I would not be here without them. I would also like to thank Kim, Kirsten, and all the Canadian sports school trainers I have been lucky enough to work with and who have inspired me daily to work harder and strive for greater goals. Finally, I need to thank my family for their constant love and support through all my, con for, through all my endeavors and challenges. They encourage me to be a better person. Thank you. Not bad, a representation of the teen in our area. Congratulations once again. And now for the Honor in the Arts, let's take a look at tonight's finalist. Honor in the Arts Award, awarded to an individual who has made an outstanding contribution in Kelowna through cultural and or artistic efforts. Sponsored by Prospera Credit Union. Honor in the Arts nominee, Stephen Buck. The gift of music is one to be shared. Stephen Buck not only shares his own talents, but created a venue for others to do so too. As co-founder of the Live After Five Jazz Jam in 2012, Stephen spends nearly every Thursday afternoon at the Rotary Center for the Arts, setting equipment and coordinating drums, bass, keys, and musicians. The two-hour jam is open to musicians and listeners free of charge and has become a showcase and stepping stone for many. 
from the shaking 14-year-old who has never played in public to the senior who hasn't performed in years, it's opened the door for countless musicians to hit the stage. As the host, Stephen goes out of his way to welcome and include everyone. Three out of the 19 Canadian musicians awarded National Honor Ensemble Awards at the University of Toronto's Music Fest last summer had honed their skills at Live After Five. As a musician, he can be found performing with Jazz Cafe, Okanagan Symphony Orchestra, Kelowna City Band, Night Owls Orchestra, Spectre Singers, Major Mambo, Kenny Blues Boss Wayne, the Okanagan Symphony Wind Ensemble, and many more. Honor in the Arts nominee, Lori Koss. When Lori Koss was approached by Canada Post in January 2014 to submit two paintings for consideration in their upcoming 2015 flower series, little did she know that 14 months later, they'd be considered a collector's item as the stamps sold out just six weeks after being unveiled. Stamp collectors across the country were contacting Hamilton Galleries, which represent her more traditional sized paintings. She was also commissioned by the Royal Canadian Mint to paint a brown-eyed Susan for a $20 silver coin. It too was revealed in 2015 and together, the stamp and coin put Kelowna on the map for many collectors. As part of the Bollywood Ensemble and the Hospice fundraising event Swinging with the Stars, Laurie took approximately 20 weekly classes to learn the moves and her team brought in nearly $22,500. She also donated one of her paintings that auctioned off for $1,500 with all proceeds going to the hospice. Lurie was a volunteer jury member at the Death and Dying Art Show at the Rotary Center for the Arts and was a guest speaker at the Painter Essence Conference. She also organized and hosted a 250-person free yoga event. Honor in the Arts nominee, Rosemary Thompson. Since becoming one of the first women music directors of a Canadian orchestra eight years ago, Rosemary Thompson has made it her goal to raise awareness and passion for the arts. Her Okanagan Symphony pre-concert lectures, program notes, and the anecdotes shared on stage have helped educate the general public, and her endeavor to promote local talent whenever she can has led to many memorable performances. But where she is making the biggest difference is with our youth. She brought Symphony Storytime to the library, and the musicians in the making to the theater's lobby to perform for the pre-symphony crowd. She launched Your Story at the Symphony, encouraging kids to write stories that could be set to music. She also worked with 90 violin and cello students at String the Thing in April 2015. She's promoted other arts organizations through collaborations with Bumbershoot Theater, Opera Kelowna, Ballet Kelowna, Kelowna Community Music School, and more. Also renowned for her choral work, Rosemary started the Okanagan Symphony Youth Chorus, as well as the Okanagan Symphony Chorus, while continuing to co-conduct the Youth Symphony. Rosemary's guest appearances ranged from singing at the Rockets game to conducting the Vancouver Symphony and UBC Opera and Opera Orchestra. I don't know, with all our categories, it is so tough to pick just one, but it has to be done. This year's Honor in the Arts Award goes to Rosemary Thompson. Please come forward and accept your award. Thanks once again to Angela Burnell for helping with the presentation. to be nominated along with Stephen and Lori. They're wonderful artists. I've shared the stage with Stephen many times, but it's been a delight to get to know Lori at the past couple of receptions, and I think we're buddies for life now. Now I have to think of how I can collaborate with an artist like that. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to the City of Kelowna for supporting the arts in the way that you do, and especially the Okanagan Symphony. I love my job, I love living here, I love the people that are here. I've discovered so much talent in this valley, and to be honored for this award, with this award, just puts the icing on the cake for me. 
I want to say a huge thank you to the team at the Okanagan Symphony Orchestra, our board of directors, Jeanette Williams, who nominated me, Tracy Reed, Roger Tilstra, Howard Soon, Anna Marie Knester, and Suzanne Tining, our incredible staff who work like Amber all the time. <laughs> There's no nine to five when you're working for the arts. Uh, Rob, Lindsay, Rebecca, Tim, Christina, and Isabella, I couldn't do it without them. Um, to all the wonderful supporters of the orchestra, all my collaborative partners in the community who I adore, the extraordinary volunteers that make up, as you see tonight, this wonderful community and for the orchestra, our sponsors and donors, and especially the musicians that I am absolutely privileged to share the stage with and that I just love coming to work with every day. The great late neurologist Oliver Sacks said, you don't need to have a particular musical knowledge or even to be very musical to be touched deeply by music because music is what makes you human and it is part of being human. At the Okanagan Symphony Orchestra, we are striving to bring the magic of live orchestral music to everyone in the Okanagan Valley, all ages. And so I hope if you haven't joined us yet, you will soon. <laughs> and I have to run now to a rehearsal. <laughs> so I want to wish all the best to all the other nominees and thank you very much for this wonderful honor. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary, and congratulations again. You'll notice that each award recipient gets a wonderful keepsake, even if they aren't able to haul the big trophy out of the theater. Individuals are getting a beautiful framed lithograph picture of Kelowna that's custom made by Helen and Harry Brust from Mark of Distinction, who have generously sponsored these custom made prints for all of our award recipients this evening. We'd like to take a second to thank Mark of Distinction for their ongoing support. Okay, let's move on to more awards tonight, the Augie Shanconi Memorial Awards. We would like to ask Hal Hennenfent, president of the Central Okanagan Schools Athletic Association, to come up here and join us on stage to help make these presentations. First, let us introduce this year's female Augie Shanconi finalists. Augie Shanconi Memorial Award. Of all the awards handed out tonight, the Augie Shanconi Memorial is the longest standing award first given out in 1952. Originally, it was awarded annually at Snowfest until the city started hosting its Banquet of Champions during the late 60s. Who was Augie Shanconi? He was an all-round athlete who excelled in gymnastics, lacrosse, boxing, and horsemanship. But his greatest gift was that of encouragement. He was instrumental in setting up Kelowna's first formal sports and recreation program and believed he could help turn lives around by directing kids' energies into sports and challenging them to achieve their personal bests. He passed away in January 1952. In keeping with his spirit, the Augie Shanconi Memorial is handed out each year to a male and female high school student athlete who not only excels in sport, but also keeps up a high academic standing and has Augie's gift of encouragement. Augie Shanconi Memorial Award Female, awarded to the most outstanding female high school athlete in the area of the Central Okanagan. Augie Shanconi Female nominee, Ellie McCarthy. As captain of both the senior girls basketball team at KSS and the UBCO U17 Junior Heat, Ellie has played an integral part in her team's success. This past year, the KSS team was ranked third in the province, and she was named one of the top athletes of the year at her school. She is looking forward to playing basketball at the Canadian college level next year, as well as being part of Team BC. In addition to her commitment to basketball, Ellie also is a starter and key player on both the KSS senior girls volleyball team, as well as playing with the Kelowna Volleyball Club. With her help, the KSS senior girls team was ranked first throughout most of the season. She also works with younger players to help them develop their skills. At school, Ellie was an active member of the Link crew and volunteered as a referee for junior team matches as well as a scorekeeper for basketball. She also took part in grad activities. Academically, she is part of an elite group of students involved in the leadership class. Augie Shanconi Memorial Award female nominee, Nicole Hart. Nicole Hart is a dual sport athlete with a tough decision to make for next year, basketball or volleyball. Equally at home and adept on both courts, she could easily go either way. 
As captain of Immaculatus Girls Volleyball Team and a member of the Junior Heat Program, she is a force to be reckoned with when on the opposite side of the net. This year, she helped Immaculata win provincials. As captain of Immaculata's girls basketball team, she earned numerous game MVPs along with best defensive player and coaches awards. She earned a first team all-star at both the Valley and provincial championships during her tenure and between the two sports, helped her teams win six provincial, six Valley and six city championships. Nicole also played basketball on the U16 and U17 provincial teams and in her spare time coached the grade A girls basketball team and volunteered for scorekeeping. Academically, Nicole has been consistently on the principals list and special merit list every year. She helped with organizing tournaments, the Terry Fox Run, and volunteered for St. Vincent de Paul. Augie Shanconi Memorial Award female nominee, Shayla Tyerman. Studying in hotel rooms and in vehicles, traveling between games is not an easy task for a teenager, but it's something Shayla Tyerman takes in stride as part of an international touring softball team. Selected as the starting shortstop for the Canada Futures softball program means traveling to U.S. colleges and universities as part of a showcase team. As part of the Kelowna Heat U18 softball team, Shayla helped them qualify for the Canadian Western Championships where they placed an unprecedented second. Although softball is her main sport, Shayla still managed to attract a scholarship in basketball, which she considers to be her third sport from her skills while playing on the RSS senior girls team. Her other sport is volleyball, where she was captain of the RSS senior girls team as well as an integral part of the U17 junior heat team. At Rutland Senior Secondary, she has a perfect 4.0 GPA and was named the grade 11 athlete of the year. She's volunteered at the Kelowna Gospel Mission and has helped with tutoring. She's also on the School Athletic Council and was chosen to be a BC Student Leadership Conference participant. And the recipient of the Augie Shanconi Memorial Award for Most Outstanding Female High School Athlete is Ellie McCarthy. Please come forward and accept your award. alongside Shayla and Nicole and thank you to everyone who's helped me uh, get where I am, coaches, Sandy Corrado especially. Um, thank you everyone. Thank you again and congratulations. And now we'll take a look at this year's male finalists. Augie Shanconi Memorial Award, male awarded to the most outstanding male high school athlete in the area of the Central Okanagan. Augie Shanconi male nominee, Nicholas Rietzma. As goalie and captain of the senior boys soccer team at Aberdeen Hall for the past three years, Nicholas Rietzma helped his team finish first in 2014 and second in 2015 single A zone championships. He was also co-captain of the boys basketball team. Outside of school, he is starting keeper for the Thompson Okanagan U18 and the BC Provincial Team where he earned the Player of Distinction Award in the Western Canada Showcase. Currently, he is in the Vancouver Whitecaps Residence Training Program and has been selected to play next season on the UBCO men's soccer team. Despite a heavy course load that includes advanced placement physics, calculus, chemistry and biology, Nicholas's marks for every class since grade 10 have been in the 90s, except for 189 back in 10th grade, keeping him steadily on the honor roll. He has been on student council for the past three years and is currently co-president. He's volunteered with the junior school classes and with local soccer camps and was the lead coordinator of the school's United Way bus pulling fundraiser. Augie Shanconi male nominee, Parker Simpson. As one of the provincial leaders in passing, rushing and receiving, it came as little surprise that Parker was awarded Varsity Football's Provincial Offensive Player of the Year Award. What did come as a surprise, however, was that he was also named the Provincial Defensive Player of the Year. 
His talents on the field are so dominant that he's a coveted player for Team BC and was featured on American television's Fox Sports 1 and on the Bleacher Report's internet sports coverage. During the offseason of football, Parker was captain of the KSS Owls quadruple-A basketball team, having twice earned the Okanagan Valley's most valuable player, and in 2015, MVP at the Western Canadian Tournament and a first-team All-Star. He also plays on Team BC's basketball team and is a member of the Canadian Centre for Performance for Basketball. Parker volunteered to help coach the KSS junior football team while he was injured and became a volunteer assistant basketball coach in the KMBA, attending leadership conferences to learn more. Despite all his training, volunteering, and a part-time job, he still found time to earn excellent grades. Augie Shenconi male nominee, Spencer Young. For the past four years, Spencer Young has been the driving force behind Okanagan Mission Secondary School's senior boys soccer team. During that time, he's helped his team win two gold, one silver, and one bronze at the annual BC School Sports Provincial Soccer Championship tournaments. This year, Spencer was added to the prestigious Commoners 11 list at the Provincial Tournament for his outstanding contribution to school soccer. Spencer also played on the OKM Senior Boys Basketball Team and in Grade 11 was nominated for the school's Senior Male Athlete of the Year Award. Spencer has been a longtime member of the Colonial United Soccer League playing on the U18 team this past year. He also trains as part of the UBCO Junior Heat Program and is known for his speed, strength and skill. At OKM, Spencer was elected to the Grad Council and has helped with organizing the various grad events over the course of the year. Academically, he has remained on the honor roll and work ethic lists throughout his time at OKM. And the recipient of the Augie Shanconi Memorial Award for Most Outstanding Male High School Athlete is Parker Simpson. Please come forward and accept your award. I'll keep it quick. Just thank you to my family and grandparents. I love them, and I wouldn't be able to do anything without them. And congrats to Spencer and Nick. Um, I've known Spencer since like grade two, and we've been friends for a long time, so good for him. And same with Nick. Just got to know him, but he's a great guy. Thank you. Even with a cane and a cast, he looks good. Well, before we move on to the next category, it's important to make mention of the excellent profile presentations that are being shown for each of the finalists. SW Audio Visual is responsible for the incredible presentations you are watching this night, this evening, as well as the stage setup. Their commitment to excellence in making each person or group shine certainly helps make this evening so enjoyable. So thank you once again. The next two awards are proudly sponsored by the YMCA of the Okanagan, empowering youth to be their very best. We'd now like to invite Joni Metherill, YMCA's board chair, up to the stage next to help present these next two awards. The Young Male and Young Female Volunteer of the Year Awards are always the most memorable categories of the night because you'll come away feeling inspired after hearing about the amount of volunteer time, the dedication, and the commitment that these teens contribute to making Kelowna a better place to live. And doing this, all while maintaining excellent grades, excelling in sports, and holding down part-time jobs. And because of this, a scholarship fund for each of the young volunteer finalists was created last year. The Dylan Thomas Budd Scholarship is funded by the Thomas Allen Budd Foundation, and here to help present as well is Mr. Tom Budd. So first up, the Young Female Volunteer of the Year category, and let's meet them now. Young Female and Young Male Volunteer of the Year Award. From student councils to candy stripers, referees to mentors, the youth of Kelowna are every bit as active volunteering as their parents. As such, it was decided in 1987 
that an award would be given out to recognize the countless volunteer hours our teens donate to make Kelowna a better place for everyone. Originally called the Young Citizen of the Year Award, it was decided by City Council in 1993 that it should be split into two awards, one for the Young Male Citizen of the Year and one for the Young Female Citizen of the Year. Recently renamed as the Young Male and Young Female Volunteer of the Year, nominees must be between the ages of 13 to 19 as of December 31st for the year of the award's honor. The primary focus for the award is on the outstanding volunteer contributions given during the year. Volunteer hours come from a variety of sectors, including recreation, the arts, education, community service, medical, business, and more. New for the 40th annual event, the three finalists in each category will receive scholarship funding to assist with their post-secondary plans, sponsored by the Thomas Allen Budd Foundation. Young Female Volunteer of the Year Award, awarded to a young female in recognition of her overall outstanding contributions to the City of Kelowna. Sponsored by YMCA of Okanagan. Young Female Volunteer of the Year nominee, Chenea Kapathorn. For most teenagers, international development issues are not high on their priority list. But for Chenea Kapathorn, she is not only aware of the problems, she's doing something about them. As president of the KSS Global Awareness Club, she raised $2,000 last year to help a preschool in South Africa build a garden and to fund their lunch program. They raised another $1,500 to help a Ugandan woman start her own business. Locally, she helped open Kelowna Children's Eyes to the world by giving a presentation on global awareness. President and founder of the KSS Reach for the Top Club, she's also co-president of KSS Rotary Interact Club and a member of the KSS Mental Health Awareness Committee, Young Liberals Club, curling and cross-country running teams. Outside of school, Janea was the event coordinator for the Mini We Day Kelowna, helped coach a girls' soccer team, tutored an elementary student, and despite completing her 100-hour volunteer commitment at KGH, continues volunteering at the Perking Lot Cafe. In 2014, she was chosen to attend the Canadian Student Leadership Conference and awarded the Grade 11 Academic Citizenship Award. Young Female Volunteer of the Year nominee, Maya Gay. Maya's passion for leadership began in grade nine when she became secretary of the OKM Rotary Interact Club. Elected vice president the following two years, she is now president. As such, she's initiated their Adopt-A-Block program, organized multiple food drives, and helped raise thousands of dollars for both local and international charities. She is also president of her grad class and contributes to the school's yearbook, field hockey team, and musical theater program. Outside of the school walls, she has been volunteering at Metro Community for the past two years and convinced her school's Interact Club to start Metro Mondays, whereby a team from the school goes each week to help feed the homeless. In spring 2015, was part of a 10-day mission trip to Los Angeles' Skid Row, where she prayed and provided a spa for the downtrodden. She also volunteers regularly at her church. As co-creator of the Basecamp Card Company, she earned first place in the School District 23's Dragon's Den competition, as well as the Ledcor Group Rural Company of the Year, the Keg Spirit Foundation Next Generation Leaders Award, and was chosen to participate in both the Next Big Thing 2015 and MetaBridge Business Conference. Young Female Volunteer of the Year nominee, Kelty Slaney. When Kelty was in middle school, she watched as young girls began making wrong decisions just to fit in. Her desire to help led to the creation of Amicia, an online program linking middle school girls with positive senior female role models. Now that she's in grade 12, she is co-director of this successful program. Kelty was a finalist for this award last year while still in grade 11. Currently, she's vice president of the RSS Interact Club and acts as the RSS representative at the district student council. She's also a member of the Lifesavers team, the Wellness Committee, and student leader for Beyond the Herd, as well as co-chair of the diversity team, captain of the cross-country running team, a trained peer mentor, and was a selected panelist for the SD23 Youth Summit. In the community, Kelty volunteers with the Okanagan Diversity Club, Kelowna Running Club, Soul Girls, and is a junior coach for the Ogopogo Triathlon team. She coaches the Big White Blazers and instructs at the Kids Center while still finding time to pursue her own passion of running and triathlon, winning the U19 category at the Pusher Mitchell Apple Triathlon.
Wow. <laughs> wow. Aren't these people incredible? The 2015 award for Young Female Volunteer of the Year goes to Maya Gay. <laughs> Maya is currently away on a school sailing trip, so her brother Aiden is here now tonight to accept the award on her behalf. Right now, Maya can't be here because she's um, on a sailing trip on a tall ship in uh, the Gulf Islands with her high school called Salt. And so uh, I'm accepting the award for her. And this is what she would like to say. Um, Maya would like to thank her family for being such incredible role models in her life. She realizes how necessary giving back is considering how blessed we are to live in Kelowna. Um, thank you th for the city for this honor. Is there anything smartphones can't do? <laughs> and now we're going to focus on the young male volunteer, and we'll meet the three finalists for that award now. Young Male Volunteer of the Year Award, awarded to a young male in recognition of his overall outstanding contributions to the City of Kelowna, sponsored by the YMCA of Okanagan. Young Male Volunteer of the Year Award nominee, Stuart Isherwood. It's in you to give. The slogan for Canadian Blood Services is something that Stuart Isherwood takes to heart. As part of the KSS Young Blood for Life program, he has coordinated two blood drives in the past year that also involved educating fellow students about the need for blood. He's also a regular donor. Stuart is a longtime volunteer at the Kelowna General Hospital, where he works at both the Royal Bistro and on the research team in emergency. He is also a volunteer with Canadian Hospital Injury Reporting and Prevention Program and a hospital book delivery volunteer as part of the hospital's library system. At school, Stewart is a member of the KSS Interact Club, Young Liberals, Reach for the Top, and the Grad Council. He works part-time for McDonald's after school and is also a volunteer with the Ronald McDonald House Charity. In 2014, he was chosen to attend the Canadian Student Leadership Conference and spent part of the summer volunteering at Camp OC. His volunteer hours for 2015 total 373 hours. Young Male Volunteer of the Year Award nominee, Nicholas Caban. For Nick Caban, it's not all about the bass, about the bass, no treble. It's about getting the sound blended just right, so that thousands of people each week at Trinity Baptist Church can focus on the sermon and meaning of the songs they're hearing, and not the feedback from the monitors. Although it recently became a paying position, Nick began at the church as an audio volunteer in 2008 and has continued on ever since. Trinity Baptist isn't the only church in Kelowna that benefits from Nick's skills. He also volunteers his audio engineering talents with both the House Church and Willow Park Church every week, as well as helping at the annual Rush Youth Conference. At Kelowna Christian School, Nick has donated countless hours volunteering as a peer tutor and also as an audio engineer for the school's musical concerts and drama presentations. He provides extensive leadership to both high school and middle school technicians. He has spent the past three summers working and volunteering at Green Bay Bible Camp as their media coordinator, leading a team of three other staff and troubleshooting technical problems during the off-season. Young Male Volunteer of the Year Award nominee, Miles Matilla. As right-winger on the BC MML Okanagan Rockets, Miles Matilla is also a huge Vancouver Canuck fan. After reading how Rick Rippon of the Canucks had lost his life to mental illness, coupled with having a similar scare involving a close friend, Miles knew he had to do something to help shed light on the often hushed up subject and became actively involved in an organization called mindcheck.ca. Mental health isn't something most teens want to talk about, so Miles is trying to raise awareness on the subject and let other teens know help is available. At OKM, he is involved in Got Health, a program designed to raise awareness and end stigma of mental illness. Before moving to Kelowna, Miles contacted Canadian Mental Health Association's Kelowna branch and upon his arrival became their youth ambassador. 
He has been involved in the Mental Health Summit, Youth Team Activation Day, and put together a team for the Ride Don't Hide fundraiser. He's given speeches and informational presentations, as well as appeared in interviews on both radio and TV. Currently volunteering as a BCHL spokesperson and youth representative, Miles is also on the advisory committee of the 2016 Balancing Our Minds event. And the award for Young Male Volunteer of the Year goes to Stuart Isherwood. Please come forward to accept your award. And thank you to Joni and Tom for helping to present these awards. Hi, okay. <laughs> Um, I think it's really important that first of all we, uh, I'm, like I just am so humbled that I was a finalist with these like amazing guys, like the, the involvement they have in their community is just, it's amazing, well our community I guess. Um, yeah, just being appreciated in something that I guess I never expected to be appreciated in is like beyond gratifying, so that's really nice. Um, I want to thank Kenzar and uh, Nancy Walls at the Kelowna General Hospital, as well as Elaine and Claire at the Bistro. I want to thank Kelowna, or, sorry, uh, Kelowna Secondary School for nominating me, because that was, I guess, an important thing. <laughs> um, yeah, apparently. Um, I want to thank my family, my friends, my parents for driving me to volunteering before I could drive, because that was probably worse than <laughs> me wanting to volunteer. And uh, yeah, just thank you so much to the city of Kelowna. Like, it's, it's amazing living here, and it's truly an honor to to, to win this. Thank you. Very well said, Stuart. All of the nominees in both of the categories, just fantastic. We've got some great youth in our community. It's time to recognize our writer for the wonderful bios that we're hearing voice tonight. Glenna Turnbull has the tough task of taking all of the info provided in the nomination forms and writing a bio that reflects as much of that information as possible while keeping them to about a minute in length. So thank you for your hard work, Glenna. Next up is tonight's sports categories. How fortunate we are to live in a community with so many great opportunities to participate in sports, whether recreational or elite, on the court, in the water, on the ski hills. There is something for everyone to get out and enjoy. So let's start recognizing the coaches that make this possible. The Bob Giordano Memorial Award. Would Matt Shirell from the Sports Selection Committee come on up here and join us on stage to make this presentation? And as he makes his way up here, let's meet tonight's finalist in this category. Bob Giordano Memorial Award. In Kelowna, the name Bob Giordano was as synonymous with hockey in the 50s and 60s as Tim Hortons is today for coffee. But although Tim Horton was first known as a hockey player, Bob wasn't exactly known for his athletic prowess. Instead, it was Bob's organizational skills and enthusiasm for the game that made him an indispensable part of the local sporting scene. Bob gave the gift of his time and enthusiasm to the young people of Kelowna, propelling them forward in the sport of their choice, and as such, the Bob Giordano Memorial is given out each year to honor a coach, trainer, or other volunteer in the field of sports who works behind the scenes to champion our athletes in amateur sport. Bob passed away in October 1965. One of the original awards handed out during the city's Banquet of Champions during the late 60s and 70s, the Bob Giordano, along with the Augie Shanconi Memorial Awards, later became part of a larger City Awards Night in 1983. Bob Giordano Memorial Award. Awarded to an individual who has contributed significantly to Kelowna through voluntary service to amateur sport, such as coaching or administrative support. Bob Giordano Coach of the Year Award nominee, George Curran. Scrums and flankers, tries and lineouts, eight-man and props, 
If you know any of these terms, you might have George Curran to thank. As an active member of the Kelowna rugby community for decades, George recognized back in 2010 that although there was a small community of players locally, it was nothing compared to the popularity of the game globally. Touch rugby in particular seemed to be growing everywhere, but had remained non-existent here. So together with his friend Ken Bow, the two set out to change that. George started Crow's Mini Rugby in spring 2011 with 25 eager 48-year-olds. By the spring of 2015, popularity had grown to where 214 boys and girls in 12 different elementary schools and another 170 kids in community leagues were playing touch rugby or touch sevens. As for adults, more than 120 registered to play in the new league. George does all the promotional work and volunteer recruitment for the league. He is also the director of operations for ARC programs, a company that services the needs of at-risk youth in the community. He coaches hockey and referees rugby and has been the key organizer of the Ensign Cup fundraising rugby tournament for 30 years. Bob Giordano Coach of the Year Award nominee, Dennis Richardson. When coaching the Kelowna Special Olympics softball team, Dennis teaches his athletes much more than hitting, pitching, and catching. From the importance of healthy eating to making exercise a lifelong commitment, Dennis has spent the last 15 years mentoring and encouraging Special Olympic athletes so they can compete on an international level. Indoor training begins at the gym each January with on-field training starting in April. He's there at practices and helps his coaches during their regular rec league games every week. He attended training camps and served as one of the national level coaches for the Team Canada Grizzlies. In 2015, the Grizzlies won bronze at the World Summer Games Special Olympics and were inducted in the Special Olympics BC Hall of Fame in November as the only team to represent Canada and win medals at three different games. In past years, Dennis has also coached the Special Olympics 10-pin and powerlifting teams, always with the goal of making these special athletes become the very best they can be. Bob Giordano Coach of the Year Award nominee, Paul Thiessen. Coaching a volleyball team is a huge time commitment. Coaching two means double. Add a third team into the mix and there goes your social life. But for Paul Thiessen, it's a commitment he's maintained for the past 27 years, with some years even including a national level fourth team. As a teacher and the athletic director at Okanagan Mission Secondary, in 2015, Paul coached both the senior boys and grade eight volleyball teams, as well as the U18 Kelowna Volleyball Club boys team, which came away with an impressive fourth place finish at the Best of the West tournament, beating out the Fraser Valley Volleyball Club who had previously gone undefeated their entire season. Paul's success has to do with team development. He makes sure to divide playing time up so the team has more than just a strong starting lineup, which also helps keep the players fresh. In 2015, five of the 12-member team were selected to play at CIS and a sixth at the BCAA level. A former national team player, Paul has coached numerous athletes into CIS level careers. Off the court, he also makes time to volunteer at Trinity Baptist Church. Incredible coaches, one and all, and the 2015 recipient of the Bob Giordano Memorial Award goes to Dennis Richardson. Come on up. It's, it's such an honor just to be uh, nominated for this award, never mind uh, actually getting here. Um, <laughs> gee, it's, um, of course, you've got, you can't do it alone. There was some great um, help I had with the other coaches, Lorena Mead and Ian Olive, 
and uh, some of the games that we played um, in the cold up at night, and then we went to Los Angeles and played in the hot, hot sun. Uh, the athletes just performed um, very, very well, obviously, because we won medals there. And um, it was nice that they actually paid attention to the coaches once in a while. That, <laughs> that made it worthwhile. Um, I want to thank you very, very much, and it's such an honor to be here. Thank you. Next up, we're going to recognize the Male and Female Athlete of the Year. So I'd like to ask my lovely coworker and friend Tamara Joel from Easy Rock and members of the Sports Selection Committee to come up and help present the next two awards. Let's hear now about this year's three talented female athlete finalists first. Male and Female Athlete of the Year Award and the Brian Cooling Memorial Athletic Team of the Year Award Maybe it's something in the air, or maybe in the water, or maybe it's the extra dose of sunshine from living in the Okanagan. Whatever the case, Kelowna has been home to countless athletes who've gone on to shine on both the national and international fields, ranks, slopes, pitches, and more. From world-class golfers and skiers to gymnasts, figure skaters, and pentathletes, the city of Kelowna has been firmly established on the map as the hometown to these great athletes. As such, since 1981, an award is handed out to the top male and female athletes who bring the greatest amount of recognition to our city through their athletic achievements. And because team effort is every bit as important as individual efforts, the Brian Cooling Memorial Athletic Team of the Year Award is handed out to the sports team that brings the greatest amount of recognition to Kelowna. Brian Cooling was the sports director for CKIQ Radio during the late 70s and 80s and became known as the voice for sports in Kelowna. He was known as a sportsman's sportsman, always recognizing the effort of the athlete along with the coaches, parents, and managers. From committees to executive positions, he worked behind the scenes to develop amateur sports both locally and provincially. He was the founder of the Civic Sports Awards in 1981, and despite suffering a stroke that left him almost totally paralyzed and unable to speak, remained a dedicated and active member of the Civic Sports Award Selection Committee until he passed away in April 1997. Athlete of the Year Award, female, awarded to a female athlete, amateur or professional, who brought the greatest amount of recognition to Kelowna in 2015. Female Athlete of the Year nominee, Olivia Gran. Take your right foot and pull it back up behind your spine so it's higher than your head. Grab it with both hands and look up at it while you spin around in circles on a sheet of ice balanced on the metal blade of a skate. A and don't forget to smile. Maybe it comes a little easier if, like Olivia, you started figure skating at the age of three and spend nearly 20 hours per week training both on and off the ice with the Kelowna Figure Skating Club. In 2015, those years of training paid off for Olivia as she medaled at nearly every competition she entered, including winning the BC and Yukon sectionals and the honor to move on to the nationals. At Skate Canada, Olivia set a new Canadian novice women's record, winning the gold with a record of 130.23 points, more than 14 points higher than the previous record. This year, Olivia won the short program at Nationals, finishing second overall, and has her set sight on a spot at the Canada Winter Games. Female Athlete of the Year nominee, Kiara Smith. Stroke by stroke, in 2015, Kiara Smith swam across a good chunk of the globe. In February, she won back-to-back -back gold medals in the 100 and 200 meter breaststroke in Ohio at the Big Ten Conference Championship. Two months later, it was on to World Championship Trials in Toronto, where she was able to qualify for the Pan Am Games and the Worlds. In June, Kiara swam her way through the pools of France, Barcelona, and Monte Carlo, competing in the European Merit Nostrum Circuit, winning a bronze medal in the 200 meters in Barcelona. July was a record-breaking month for Kiara, winning gold in the 200 meter breaststroke and breaking the Pan Am Games record, both in the preliminary heat and again in the finals. Then she finished her season off in August at the World Championships in Russia, finishing eighth. Since then, she's been training in Minneapolis and is now back in Kelowna preparing for Olympic trials, keeping Kelowna in the news internationally. 
I wonder if she ever tells TV sportscasters that she learned to swim so fast from being chased by the Ogo Pogo. Female Athlete of the Year nominee, Heather Wirtel. Swim for 1.9 kilometers. Crawl out of the water, then run to your bike so you can cycle 90 kilometers, and then, for fun, add on a 21-kilometer run at the end. That's what it takes to complete what's called a 70.3 Ironman. And as a professional triathlete, Heather Wirtel is ranked number one in Canada and one of the fastest in the world. For more than five years, Heather has dedicated her life to training and competing in this multi-sport discipline. And although she studied and traveled the world, she always comes home to Kelowna for training. She has won 14 Ironman 70.3 events and six full distance Ironmans, holding the course record in four of those races. In 2015, it all came together for Heather when she won the North American Championships and placed second at the World Championships. She also finished with a silver medal at the Challenge Dubai Million Dollar Triple Crown. Triathlon Canada named her the 2015 Triathlon Canada Multisport Female of the Year. When she's not racing, she co-writes a blog called Team Wirtel, providing inspiration as a role model. She can also be found giving inspirational talks at schools and contributing to the YMCA Strong Kids. Some great nominees and the 2015 recipient for Female Athlete of the Year goes to Kira Smith. Kira's brother will come up to collect her award. Kira is actually currently away training for the upcoming Summer Olympics, but she has provided a video to accept her award tonight. Hi everyone, if you're seeing this, I must have won. I'm in Minneapolis right now training for Rio and sorry that I can't be there tonight. Congratulations to the other nominees. I don't know how to skate, so I can't imagine how Olivia does it, and I've competed and trained in triathlons when I was younger, and I'd love to do what Heather is doing now once I'm done swimming. Um, first, I'd like to thank my parents who are there tonight, uh, my dad, for getting me started in swimming before I was 10 by taking me lap swimming with him in the mornings and helping me fall in love with the sport, and my mom. I've always wanted to go the, to the Olympics, but um, I think that she's believed that I could go longer than I have, and that really helped me when I didn't think that I could do it. Um, also, I'd like to give a shout out just to current and former Parkinson and Rec swim instructors, the Athens lifeguards, and all the staff at the H2O. The swimming pool was a wonderful place to grow up. Thanks to both Liquid Lightning Swim Club and the Kelowna Aqua Jets for putting up with me over the past 10 years, the city of Kelowna for building a $40 million pool, and the financial support. Thanks to the terrific staff at Pacific Sport Okanagan and my coaches, including Randall White, Linda Lalone, Doug Lang, Steve Vandermulen, and Emil Dimitrov. I can't imagine not bringing home a gold medal this summer and representing Kelowna as the best that I can. See you in June. And Kira's brother is here to accept on behalf, I believe. Well, maybe not. You don't look like a brother. <laughs> We of course wish Kira all the best as they, uh, she gets ready for the Summer Olympic Games in Rio. The August is coming up quick. We know she will do Kelowna very, very proud. The next award is the Male Athlete of the Year. And now we can hear about the three finalists in this category. Athlete of the Year Award, Male, awarded to a male athlete, amateur or professional, who brought the greatest amount of recognition to Kelowna in 2015. Male Athlete of the Year nominee, Jerome Blake. Once the starter's pistol has gone off, the back of Jerome Blake's head is about all the competition sees until they've all crossed the finish line. Ranked as the fastest in BC in the 200 meter distance and second in the 100, and he's quickly scaling the national ranks too. In 2015, Jerome won four gold medals at the Western Canadian Games, one each for the 100 and 200 meters, and on two relay teams. Jerome set a Canada Games record in both the 100 and 200 meter distances, but was unable to officially compete in the finals due to his citizenship status. With Jerome's speed, 
Once his Canadian citizenship becomes official, his dream of a spot on Canada's national team can come true. He's hoping to make the Olympic standard for both the 100 and 200 meters and to compete at the North American, Central American and Caribbean athletic competition in Puerto Rico this August. When he's not running or training, Jerome volunteers at the Rutland Hospital Auxiliary Thrift Store and works with the young athletes of the Okanagan Athletics Club. Male Athlete of the Year nominee, Will Dean. Row, row, row your boat gently down the street. Gently, no. Smoothly, yes. Born and raised in Kelowna, Will first started rowing for Canada in 2008, winning a silver medal in the U23 World Championships. After attending University of California on a rowing scholarship, he moved to Victoria to train full-time with the senior national team. In 2012, Will competed in London at the 2012 Olympics and is now training for the 2016 Summer Games in Rio, determined to better his ninth place finish with a medal this time. In 2015, Will made headlines winning two gold medals at the Pan Am Games on the men's four and eight plus teams. His teams repeated the same feat with two more gold medals at the Hollenbecker. Then the four-man team won bronze at the World Cup. Being an Olympic rower requires training seven days a week through wind, rain, and snow. To balance out the rigors of rowing's physical demands, Will is an avid yogi, describing yoga as the yin to the yan of rowing. Will is a passionate and motivated public speaker and is requested to appear at numerous events every year. Male Athlete of the Year nominee, Ryan Moffat. There's a fine line between skiing fast and skiing too fast to make those tight gates. For Ryan Moffat, it's a line he pushes continuously. In 2015, Ryan was the top-ranked giant slalom skier for his age in Canada, fourth in the Super G and eighth in slalom. Thanks to his strong finishes in December 2015, he qualified as one of only two male athletes in Canada to represent our country at the 2016 Youth Olympic Games in Lillehammer. Always pushing that line has led Ryan to competing and occasionally crashing on the world circuit as part of the FIS program. Despite the crashes, he remains fearless in his approach to tackling the high-speed Super G courses and the more technical giant slalom and slalom courses. In 2015, he managed to finish in the top three of nearly every race he competed in in the U18 category, earning a spot in the Provincial Ski Team Summer Program. Moving into 2016, Ryan finished in first place in the FIS U18 category at the Nikiska Alberta Cup Series race and fourth in the Super G, then won a Super G in Kimberley in February. And the 2015 recipient of the Male Athlete of the Year Award goes to Will Dean. Will's sister Jillian and brother Spencer will make their way up here to accept. Will is also in the midst of preparing for a rather important Olympic year, not able to be here with us tonight, but we do have this video presentation. Hi, so the, the first thing that comes to mind here is just thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, just taking a look at the list of previous uh, recipients of this award, and it's, it's truly a humbling group to be a part of. Uh, it's also a, real, a huge honor for me to be included with Ryan and Jerome here. Uh, both have had incredible seasons, and I'm really excited to see where both of them uh, go in the rest of their careers. And finally, I just wanted to say thank you to the entire community of Kelowna. Like, I just, it's an absolutely fantastic community. You see how many really amazing athletes come out of here every year and just historically and, and young athletes coming up. And um, I think there's a really good reason for that. We're a very supportive uh, sports-based community. And I think that, you know, I'm just really thankful to, to have been from here and to represent the city of Kelowna. Thank you. And accepting on behalf is uh, Will's sister Jillian, brother Spencer. Congratulations again to Will and uh, best of luck to him with all of his training in this Olympic year. And we have many outstanding sponsors that help make tonight's event possible and Kelowna's Grant Thornton Chartered Accountants is one of them. Sponsoring tonight's Brian Cooling Memorial Athletic Team of the Year. 
This award goes to the team, amateur or professional, that has brought the, the greatest amount of recognition to the city of Kelowna. And I'd like to ask Tyler Niels, partner of Grant Thornton, to join us on stage to help present this award. Let's learn more now about the teams in this category. Brian Cooling Memorial Award. Awarded to the Kelowna-based team, amateur or professional, who brought the greatest amount of recognition to Kelowna in 2015. Sponsored by Grant Thornton. Brian Cooling Memorial Athletic Team of the Year nominee, the Kelowna Grizzlies Special Olympic Softball Team. Together everyone achieves more. That is the cheer everyone hears as the Special Olympics Kelowna Grizzly softball team hit the field for a game, and clearly the team paid attention to those words of encouragement as together they achieved gold medals at the regionals, provincials, and then nationals last summer. With the help of three dedicated coaches, the Grizzlies added a few more players from across the province and became known as the Team Canada Grizzlies when they went to compete at the 2015 World Summer Games Special Olympics in Los Angeles. This was the team's third podium finish at this elite competition, winning bronze this time to complete their set of gold medals in 1999 and a silver in 2011. The team was then inducted into the Special Olympics BC Hall of Fame for becoming the only team to ever earn medals at three separate World Games Special Olympics. Ranging in age from 18 to 50, the Grizzlies are proof that really, together, everyone does achieve more. Brian Cooling Memorial Athletic Team of the Year nominee, the Kelowna Rockets 2014-2015 Hockey Team. After staying in the top 10 in the Canadian Hockey League throughout the 2014-15 season, the Kelowna Rockets capped off the season by winning the Western Hockey League division in a three-game sweep against the Brandon Wheat Kings, earning a berth at the 2015 Memorial Cup. Although they bulldozed the Quebec Ramparts in the semifinals, they lost to the Oshawa Generals in the final game, placing second in the annual national tournament. During the regular season, more than a quarter of a million tickets were sold. Several games were televised locally on Shaw, with nine more broadcast nationally on Sportsnet. An estimated 759,000 watched the televised Memorial Cup game. Revenue from 50-50 tickets sold at Rockets games resulted in more than $250,000 for the Kelowna Minor Hockey Association. Players worked hard both on and off the ice with more than 70 appearances at local schools, minor hockey practices, and community events. Two of the Rockets were chosen for the 2015 World Junior Team. They also had players named MVP at the Memorial Cup and the Most Sportsmanlike Player Award in Canada from the CHL. Brian Cooling Memorial Athletic Team of the Year nominee, Okanagan Sun Football Team. Not even a 30 SPF sunscreen could have helped the Okanagan Suns competition last season as the Suns scorched every single team they played. With a perfect 10-0 regular season, they scored a record-breaking 488 points, allowing only 108 to be scored against. It was even more lopsided in the playoffs where they scored 129 points, only allowing their opponents 7. This shattered the conference record as no team had ever before scored more than 100 in just two playoff games. The Suns' defensive line dominated and collected a team record of 40 quarterback sacks. The offensive line set new season records for passing yards, total yards, and touchdown passes. Winners of the BC Cullen Cup, the Sun earned a trip to the Canadian Bowl National Championship Final where clouds finally rolled in and they lost 38 to 24. Nine players were named Conference All-Stars and defensive back Brendan Van Nistelrooy was named Defensive Player of the Year. Six players were named All-Canadians by the Canadian Junior Football League. Eight players signed letters of intent with Canadian universities. Two were invited to the CFL Regional Combine in Edmonton and one to the National. Three incredible teams, but the, the award for tonight's Brian Cooling Memorial Athletic Team of the Year goes to the Kelowna Rockets. Now the team itself isn't here tonight. They're in Seattle playing game four uh, against the Thunderbirds, but we've got someone from the Rockets here tonight to uh, accept the award. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Brent Hamilton. I'm a brother of Gavin and Bruce who are away with the team tonight in Seattle. 3 1 with about seven minutes to go in the second. <clears throat> on, on behalf of our players and staff of the 2015 Kelowna Rockets Hockey Club, we accept the Brian Cooling Award with honor. It was a marvelous ride to the Memorial Cup in Quebec City. Very enjoyable. I would be remiss if I did not congratulate the Okanagan Sun football team and the Kelowna Grizzlies Special Olympics softball team for their fine seasons last year. Our players take great pride in representing the city of Kelowna and the Rockets organization, and we are very fortunate to live and play in the city we feel home to, to be home to the greatest hockey fans in the country. On behalf of our team, particularly our family, we humbly thank you for this wonderful recognition. Thank you. And let's keep in mind the Rockets have come back from deficits before, so we will eagerly await tonight's outcome. It's also important to acknowledge the various selection committees that put so much time and effort into the awards program each year. There are actually five different selection committees for the various award categories. Each committee devotes their time to reviewing all the nomination submissions and then meeting to make some very, very tough decisions. These committees are listed in the back of your program, so have a look when you get a chance. You have probably noticed our event photographer tonight helping us document the, tonight's festivities is Kelowna Now. Thanks for being here and for your support as well this evening. Our next two awards are sponsored by the Best Western Plus, Kelowna Hotel and Suites. Here to present is CEO and partner Greg Saloom. The Champion for the Environment Awards. It's time to meet the three finalists in the individual category now. Corporate Community and Champion of the Environment Awards. The Corporate Community Awards and Champion of the Environment Awards are the most recent additions to the Civic Awards roster. In 2006, the Corporate Community of the Year Award was added to the awards night as a way to recognize outstanding employee volunteerism as well as financial contributions and initiatives from a business that directly benefited the citizens and city of Kelowna. It was decided the award should be split into two separate categories, one for small to medium-sized businesses with under 50 employees and a second category for large businesses with 50 or more employees. The Champion for the Environment Awards also have two separate categories, recognizing both an individual and a business for their environmental leadership and impact on our community. These two awards were adapted from the former Mayor's Environmental Awards, which began in 1999 and were incorporated into the Civic Awards in 2013. Champion for the Environment Award, Individual, awarded to an individual whose actions and achievements have shown outstanding environmental leadership or innovative environmental contributions, having a direct benefit on the City of Kelowna. Sponsored by Best Western Plus Kelowna. Champion for the Environment, Individual nominee, Gabe Sipes. From consulting with David Suzuki and Robert Bateman to volunteering at Kelowna's Waldorf School to teach children about farming, Gabe is always striving to create positive changes for the environment. Over the past year, Gabe has continued to create, maintain and cultivate diverse and resilient ecosystems using wild and domesticated plants and animals through permaculture, wildcrafting and biodynamics. Through his work, Summerhill Winery became the first biodynamic certified vineyard in BC. In 2015, Gabe served as the Vice President of the Biodynamic Association of BC, the Certified Organic Association of BC and Demeter Canada, and was a key player in the Organic Okanagan Vision for 2020. At Summerhill, he designed and built two solar glass nurseries, planted a food forest, and built wormeries and chicken coops as part of the permaculture system. He joined the Food Policy Council and began a project to bring a wildlife rehabilitation center to the Okanagan with the SPCA. Gabe is an active beekeeper and gave talks about bees, native plants, ecology, gardening and biodynamics. In addition to all of this, he has helped create and curate unique events such as the Ecotone Festival. Champion for the Environment, individual nominee Michelle Hamilton. When painted turtles were found nesting in the long jump pit at KLO Middle School, Michelle Hamilton got her class to look after and help hatch the eggs. The baby turtles were then released into a small opening of Fashaw Creek at the edge of the school grounds. 
She soon inspired her students to think outside the box, or in this case, outside the underground culvert, and imagine what it would be like to have the creek naturalized and meandering through the schoolyard. In 2015, after years of work and raising $200,000, the naturalization of Fashaw Creek was completed. In addition to her work with Fashaw Creek, Michelle assisted with surveying amphibians and documenting wetlands at the Johns Family Nature Conservancy Park and Myra Bellevue Provincial Park. She participated in organized bird counts and in native tree planting and invasive weed removal on both city properties and the school grounds. Michelle is teaching our next generations all aspects of knowing and protecting the natural environment. Class projects have included rearing and releasing kokanee, planting zero escape gardens, and building bluebird boxes, which Michelle then sets up and monitors on the UBCO campus grounds. Champion for the Environment, individual nominee, Hugh Westhauser. Since its creation in 1990, Hugh has served as a director of the Central Okanagan Land Trust, with 15 of those years as president. He has also been an active member with the Central Okanagan Naturalists Club since the 80s. His understanding of the land is so vast that he is often consulted by the City of Kelowna and other organizations for his knowledge. He's been involved in such projects as the Mod Roxby Marsh, Chichester Pond, and the Mission Creek Greenway. Hugh's latest project has been the naturalization of Munson Pond, a cause he's dedicated much of his time to in 2015, from site visits to determined trail locations to community liaison and volunteer planning events, Hugh breathed life into the project. He was asked to be part of a team headed by UBCO professor Laura Hooker to do the first fish survey work on Munson Pond in order to begin to develop the supporting data for the project. He was also initiating the first flora and fauna inventory of Munson Pond, helping to build interest and support to create another land preserve to be enjoyed by future generations. And this year's individual champion for the environment is Hugh Westhauser. see anybody out there but this is sure a surprise. <laughs> I, I am of course very honored to be nominated. I thought that was the end of it but uh, to, to be awarded this is uh, something again and I, I would like just to congratulate the other nominees because I think their work is great too. This is uh, the birds and the bees don't very often get very good press but uh, uh, there's some of us that are really keen on it and interested in it. Uh, I, I, I would just like to mention as well that <clears throat> I'm a member of the uh, Central Okanagan Land Trust, and as a member, that's how I got involved in these things. And uh, the, the Land Trust really is a, is a team of people. Uh, no one person does one thing and comes out on top. It's a uh, consulting process. It's recording, it's spending money, it's doing all those other things. And, uh, and some of them are out here tonight, some of the members of the board, and I think that I would like to recognize those as well, and like you to recognize them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hugh, for everything you do, and all your people as well. Now we have two environmental business finalists of the year, and they are, as we take a look at these finalists. Champion for the Environment Award, Business, awarded to a business whose actions and achievements have shown outstanding environmental leadership for innovative environmental contributions, having a direct benefit on the city of Kelowna. Sponsored by Best Western Plus Kelowna. Champion of the Environment, Business nominee, Boyg Energies and Services Canada. The Kelowna Airport is recognized as one of the fastest growing airports in Canada. When Boyg Energies and Services Canada was awarded the management contract of the airport, they immediately made a clear objective to reduce garbage by 60%. 
a large-scale public awareness program became implemented, and by April 2014, they achieved the ISO 14001 standard for environmental management. In 2015, they implemented a new cleaning program that includes the use of only green certified cleaning products. They use only 100% recycled paper product for the paper towels and toilet paper and green certified hand soap. They get help in reducing their garbage load by some big bellies for very prominent waste bins on site that are solar powered. Garbage has also been decreased thanks to recycling stations, the recycling of building materials and having a water bottle filling station in the departure lounge. The results are encouraging as they push to implement their corporate sustainable procurement policy further in 2016, while still maintaining a clean and well-functioning airport that will see some 1.6 million visitors pass through its doors. Champion of the environment, business nominee, unless market. Unless someone like you cares a whole lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. The wise words of Dr. Seuss in his book, The Lorax, were the inspiration for Sarah Coffey to create the Unless Market, which opened in September 2015. The concept behind Unless Market is to help people buy locally made, eco-friendly products. Inside the store, you'll find Little Creek salad dressing, which was made on the west side, and local organic eggs along with woven felt hats, unique clothing and jewelry. You'll also find products made out of reclaimed wood, glass and fabric, along with other crafts made of natural fibers, beeswax and wood. Sarah offers her customers the option of bringing in their own glass containers for refills of some products and in 2015 gave workshops on how to create things with reclaimed materials. She also created and sold unique custom painted rain barrels made from previously used food grade plastic containers. She created Okanagan Little Ones when she couldn't find locally made organic baby food and has earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental Science which she puts to use in educating others who enter her store. And the 2015 Business Champion for the Environment is the Unless Market. Come on up, get your award, and once again, congratulations. I'm just really happy that Unless Market is getting some recognition. I, we haven't been open very long and we just really hope to make a big difference in the environmental part of Kelowna. So thank you. As we move along, we've got some quick housekeeping because we are moving into some new categories honoring volunteer organizations and businesses. When the recipient is announced, we ask that only one representative come up to receive the award, but we do encourage everyone involved to come back to the stage with your whole staff team for a picture with everybody at the end of the evening. So time for the volunteer salute, and here from Kelowna Community Resources is Don Wilkinson to lead that salute, so we welcome Don to the stage. Earlier this month, the theme for National Volunteer Week was volunteers are the roots of strong communities. Well, on the surface of that, it doesn't really sound very interesting. Nobody would say, wow, that's a great looking root sitting in row five. But think about it. What do roots do? Roots anchor plants to the soil. And volunteers, you, anchor individuals in groups that care. Think about a toddler you know. If you got somebody in mind, picture this child holding an adult-sized basketball, and they're trundling to that basketball hoop so high up on their driveway. That child could become an athlete, join a team, represent Kelowna at provincial tournaments. Maybe this toddler 
will go to the Olympics and inspire our national pride. Coaches like you develop strong sport and recreation groups in our community. Roots prevent er soil erosion. Do you know a man or a woman whose spouse recently died? Can you imagine the grief and the loneliness? Ordinary people like you are ready to support this widower, this widow, as they put their lives back together, making new friends, supporting them through the emotional upheaval, maybe learning new skills like cooking or managing money. Strong networks of seniors develop in Kelowna because of volunteers. Roots move water and nutrition from the soil into the, soil, into the plant so that it can grow. Okay, box of Cheerios, package of toilet paper. Cheerios, toilet paper, both are needed, but there's only money for one. Which one? As volunteers, you keep starvation at way, up away and you help family hygiene. You support food banks, plant community gardens, share produce from orchards, host neighborhood kitchens, sit on water quality boards. We eat good food, we drink clean water, because you, you help us grow physically. Oh, and by the way, cell phones can be rooted. That basically means it connects to automated tasks, backs up content, uninstalls stuff, and gives the user customized control. As volunteers, you create websites, you help grandparents keep in touch with their family in other countries, you teach us how to use the cloud, you stream our learning opportunities. Savvy volunteers use the technology to keep Kelowna strong through communications. Our sense of community will remain strong throughout the future as our youth volunteers, represented here this evening, help us navigate change that we've yet to even imagine. And now, I'd like you to help me salute volunteers. In a moment, I want you to take your cell phone, I want you to take some selfies and some pictures around the group, and I want you to share them with hashtag civic awards. So get your cell phones and make some selfies. Stand up, let's do it. All right, ready? You ready? Oh, for sure. Ready? <laughs> now, can I get mine? <laughs> That's okay. I need to yeah, do that. Don't have to do that. We'll do this. We'll do a selfie. I guess there has to be. Uh, I've never taken a selfie. This is like this. Oh my goodness! Yeah, you can, you can do it. Yeah, that's fun. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay, we'll do this one. Okay, we're in there. Beauty. <laughs> you may be seated. Thank you for saluting volunteers in this room tonight. Thank you very much, Don Wilkinson from Kelowna Community Resources. Here to help present the Central Okanagan Foundation Volunteer Organization of the Year is Melanie Hill Shishkovich, Chair of the Board for the Central Okanagan Foundation. So we ask that Melanie please come forward to help present. There'll also be a generous donation of $2,000 presented to the recipient on behalf of the Central Okanagan Foundation after the awards night. Now let's meet our finalists for this year's Volunteer Organization of the Year. Central Okanagan Foundation Volunteer Organization of the Year Award. From feeding the homeless to helping battered women, teaching literacy to adults, or scouting girl guides to children, there are countless volunteer organizations at work every day in the city of Kelowna, working to make this city a better place. As such, in 1999, 
The Volunteer Organization of the Year Award was created and sponsored by the Central Okanagan Foundation. The hardest thing about this award is trying to decide a winner because really, we all win by having so many great volunteer organizations. Whether they are teaching seniors to use computers or helping people with disabilities to go hiking or skiing, it is these organizations that celebrate what it is to be human and give freely of our abilities and talents. The Central Okanagan Foundation Volunteer of the Year Award was welcomed enthusiastically as an addition to the awards night by the community and continues to create a next to impossible decision for the judging committee each year as these organizations provide outstanding community services directly benefiting the city of Kelowna. The Central Okanagan Foundation Volunteer Organization of the Year Award, awarded to a volunteer or nonprofit organization that has provided outstanding community services with direct benefits to the city of Kelowna, sponsored by the Central Okanagan Foundation. Volunteer Organization of the Year nominee, Hands in Service. Hands in Service is an organization with a very fitting name. More than 360 pairs of hands volunteered last year to provide free non-medical home care to Kelowna area residents in need between the ages of 15 to 64. In 2015, the Hands in Service volunteers delivered almost 900 food and tiny bundles hampers to people in need who faced transportation challenges and otherwise wouldn't have been helped. Their energetic hands and blitz programs that help with basic housekeeping and food preparation made 425 visits last year, each averaging two hours in length, helping with chores that ranged from laundry and house cleaning to cooking and stocking up meals into their freezers. The Living Salad Project, which distributes planters of produce people can grow and harvest, saw an 86% increase from its first year, with 264 of the planters delivered. In helping to educate the public on these needs, volunteers provided over 2,500 hours of mentorship and training to students at UBC Okanagan, Okanagan College, and various other organizations. Altogether, volunteers donated 7,700 hours of time and 950 clients were served in 2015 by these Hands in Service. Volunteer Organization of the Year nominee, Kelowna Gospel Mission. Because there's no place like home, Kelowna Gospel Mission is a true godsend for those who otherwise wouldn't have one. Since opening its doors in 1978, the Gospel Mission has gone from handing out sandwiches in the park to serving between 400 to 500 meals per day to those in need. In 2015, more than 153,000 meals were served. Approximately 170 people volunteered at the Kelowna Gospel Mission over the past year, averaging more than 200 hours each, whether cooking in the kitchen, serving, or working in the thrift store that doubles as means to provide clothing and household items to the less fortunate. It's volunteers that cooked and served the Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving feasts, and more volunteers who raised over $25,000 in the Strides to End Homelessness Walk. Last year, 25,869 bed nights were provided to those who would have otherwise slept on the street, and more than 2,500 low-income patients received dental care. In 2015, their thrift store moved to a new location, enabling the mission to expand. They're now able to offer a new men's recovery program and chiropractic care once a week to serve those most in need. Volunteer Organization of the Year nominee, Okanagan Chefs Association. Braising, basting, roasting, flambéing, and marinating. The Okanagan Chefs Association donate hundreds of hours each year to dish up gourmet meals at local fundraisers. In 2015, their 127 members donated over 4,000 hours of time, both in the kitchen and out. Okanagan Chefs Association is an active part of the Gold Medal Plates Culinary Championship, providing volunteers, storage, and kitchen space to competitors. They're also behind the Black Tie Dinner for the Cancer Society's Daffodil Ball and Nature Trust of BC's fundraising dinner, and cooked a three-course Valentine's Day meal for patrons at the Kelowna Gospel Mission. The chefs spearhead the Growing Chefs Okanagan program, volunteering in elementary classrooms, teaching kids to cook the food grown in school gardens. In 2015, over 100 students participated in this project. For college-level students, they handed out two $500 bursaries and several $250 awards. In the community, there was no mistaking them when 29 chefs donned their whites in support of Heart and Stroke, cycling the big bike and raising $2,200. They were also found cooking up a storm for the Okanagan Feast of Fields and pressing apple juice for the food bank.
And the Central Okanagan Foundation Volunteer Organization of the Year Award goes to Hands in Service. <laughs> I'd like to thank the City of Kelowna and uh, Central Okanagan Foundation for hosting this award. Hands in Service is very honored to be here and to accept this award, and I am uh, very honored to be working with a wonderful group of people who are supposed to be standing up. <laughs> um, volunteers impact our communities immensely. And we are in good company with not only the two other uh, finalists, but so many amazing volunteer organizations. We're privileged to live in Supernatural BC. We're privileged to be in the sunny Okanagan. God has given us so much, and we are really proud to be in a position to give love back to our community. Thank you. The Corporate Community of the Year Awards are sponsored by Kelowna Community Resources. Now these awards are judged based on a business commitment to the community and encouragement for employee volunteerism. This category is split, recognizing small to medium local businesses that give back to the community as well as the large businesses for their support and contributions to many worthwhile causes. We'd like to welcome Laura Turn here for Kelowna Community Resources to the stage to help present these two awards. And we'll start off by getting to know this year's small to business, medium business finalists. Corporate Community of the Year Award, Small to Medium Business. Awarded to a Kelowna business that has provided outstanding support for employee volunteerism in addition to financial contributions and initiatives having had a direct benefit to the City of Kelowna. Sponsored by Kelowna Community Resources. Corporate Community of the Year, Small to Medium Business, Boyd Auto Body and Glass. What happens when you combine a classic old car and a barbecue? For Boyd Auto Body, not only did it make a very cool looking carbecue, but put the word fun into fundraising. Over the years, carbecue rentals have resulted in an average of $2,500 annually for the SPCA. In 2015, Boyd's added another carbecue to their fleet to help boost proceeds in coming years. Every June, Boyd's hosts the Father's Day Car Show, generating a minimum of $10,000 annually to donate. In 2015, $11,124 was donated to the YMCA Strong Kids campaign. Over the past 10 years, they've donated over $100,000 to various charities. In 2015, the Girl Guides needed a truck to deliver Boyd's 600 boxes of cookies, which were then given to customers. Boyd's Christmas food drop campaign generated so much, it took an entire week to disperse the van load to food banks through the valley. They also raised $2,500 over Christmas with a headlight restoration and exterior wash promotion for Cops for Kids. Anticipating a shortage of trained collision repairmen, Boyd's have built a mobile collision repair demonstration vehicle they are touring through local high schools and made a donation towards Okanagan College's training facility. Corporate Community of the Year, Small to Medium Business, Orange Fitness. As the hosts of the annual Okanagan's largest outdoor yoga class for the past six years, Orange Fitness has not only introduced hundreds to the benefits of yoga, but turned the event into an important fundraiser as well. In 2015, it raised $1,800 for their Mats for Meta organization. Mats for Meta makes yoga accessible for those who might not have access on their own. For every one-year membership purchased at Orange, one lifetime warrantied yoga mat gets donated to the community. In 2015, 90 mats and more than 30 props went to Canadian Mental Health, the Cancer Lodge, Okanagan Boys and Girls Club, and School District 23 Schools. 
Throughout the year, Orange holds several classes by donation for different causes. One Saturday in August, they raised $1,000 for the SPCA. In September, it was $1,600 for Run for the Cure and another $700 in Movember. Orange donated to more than 50 silent auctions and acted as a drop-off for the BC Halo Project, collecting blankets and warm clothes for the needy. They sponsor a family each Christmas and last year sent instructors to the National Leadership Conference for secondary schools. Corporate Community of the Year, Small to Medium Business, Rambo Mechanical Limited. Helping to prepare the next generation of skilled trades workers is something Rambo Mechanical's president and CEO, Patrick Wanch, is passionate about. In 2015, the company donated $50,000 to support the construction of the plumbing shop in the new Okanagan Trades Building at Okanagan College, as well as donating a forklift and another $41,140 towards the third floor mechanical room. Patrick, on behalf of Rambo, serves as a mentor for Canadian and international immigrants needing assistance and is an active member of the Canadian Construction Association and chair of the Trades Contractors Council. Patrick, on behalf of Rambo, serves as a mentor for Canadian and international immigrants needing assistance and is an active member of the Canadian Construction Association and chair of the Trade Contractors Council. He is also chair for the Program Advisory Committee at Okanagan College in Kelowna. With 45 plumbers and office staff, Rambo Mechanical supports the Food Bank, Cancer Society, and local golf tournaments through financial donations. Patrick has sat on the Southern Interior Construction Association board for nearly two decades and recently had a trade scholarship named after him. His company has employed over 200 apprentices since it began, helping them get the hands-on training they need to succeed. It's our pleasure to award the 2015 Small to Medium Corporate Community of the Year Award recipient to Boyd Auto Body and Glass. Please come forward and accept your award. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to uh, my all-star team back at work who support me and uh, thanks to uh, the hundreds of volunteers that have stepped behind us and helped us through all these crusades of fundraising. Um, as well as I'd like to say thanks to the City of Kelowna and to all the support this community has given me and my family over the years. And um, finally, I'd like to say thanks to my family and my beautiful wife for supporting me. Thanks. See, now there's a smart man. <laughs> now, now we turn to this year's large business finalist. Let's have a look. Corporate Community of the Year Award, Large Business. Awarded to a Kelowna business that has provided outstanding support for employee volunteerism, in addition to financial contributions and initiatives having had a direct benefit to the City of Kelowna. Sponsored by Kelowna Community Resources. Corporate Community of the Year Large Business nominee, McDonald's Restaurants of Kelowna. Your happy meal might seem a little McHappier when you realize what McDonald's is doing here in Kelowna. As sponsors of 12 Kelowna Adam Level hockey teams, they provide a full set of jerseys with matching socks and toques for players and coaches, and the Heart and Hustle Award certificates for VIP players of every game. Coaches even get free coffee. 2015 marked their first year sponsoring soccer as well, taking on the Kelowna U10 boys and girls teams. Snacks and refreshments have regularly been supplied to Kelowna Skating Club and Okanagan Gymnastics Tournaments, and coupon booklets were donated to Rutland Minor Ball for fundraising. In the community, McDonald's helps with Maxine DeHart's drive through breakfast each year, holds reading and Ronald tours at the library, and sponsors the Coffee for Pink Shirt Day. For over 15 years, they have provided the Fire Chief for a Day dinner at Kelowna Fire and Rescue. In the last seven years, Central Okanagan McDonald's has donated close to $80,000 to the Okanagan Boys and Girls Club through McHappy Days that take place every May. Certainly something to be McHappy about. Corporate Community of the Year Large Business nominee, TELUS. 
In hopes of assuring that in Kelowna, the future is friendly, TELUS employees and retirees continue to work tirelessly in our community. This past year, the local TELUS board donated $79,000 in support of 11 local charities, such as the Fashaw Creek Restoration and Habitat Conservation Project, the Canoe Kids Mini League, and facilitated the Economics for Success program for over 2,000 Okanagan students through Junior Achievement of BC. Employees and retirees contributed more than $30,000 through Team TELUS charitable giving programs, and corporately, TELUS donated to Okanagan Boys and Girls Clubs, KGH Foundation, Kelowna Habitat for Humanity, Summer Arts Scene for Youth in Central Okanagan, Central Okanagan Community Food Bank Society, and Kelowna Falcons Baseball. During the annual TELUS Day of Giving, 345 volunteers completed 20 local charity projects, including cleaning and painting the Kelowna Food Bank, packing shoes at the Shoe Bank, and preparing and serving meals at the Gospel Mission. The TELUS Ambassadors Club has 129 active volunteers who are continually sought after to help at a myriad of events year-round throughout the city. In 2015, TELUS employees and retirees contributed more than $175,000 and 43,000 volunteer hours to charitable and community organizations throughout Kelowna. Corporate Community of the Year, Large Business Nominee, Valley First Credit Union. Valley First's website states, we give with our hearts, hands, minds, and dollars. And in 2015, they truly lived by these words. With hearts and hands, employees donated countless hours to the Kelowna Food Bank, Parks Alive, and through Make a Difference Days. They appeared at sweltering soccer games with cold drinks and freezies and at jamborees with snacks and water. Their Feed the Valley Food Drive is recognized nationally, raising over $950,000 and 64,000 pounds of food since 2005, and in 2015 donated over $113,000 to local charities to prevent hunger. With their minds and dollars, They've sponsored Kelowna United Soccer via the Valley First Soccer Center and helped attract outside attention to offer programs during the winter months. They've also helped many young soccer players by subsidizing their fees and sponsoring the annual Koisa Indoor Soccer Tournament where they also collect donations for the Feed the Valley Food Drive. Additional events they sponsored in 2015 include the Tommy Awards, the Apple Triathlon, and more. They provide bursaries and scholarships for graduates and created a basic money management course for elementary school kids. In Kelowna and surrounding area, they donated over $277,000 in 2015. And our Large Business Corporate Community of the Year is awarded to Valley First. Congratulations and thanks to Laura, presenting on behalf of KCR. short. Max, take notes. <laughs> this award is all about uh, the team at Valley First here in the Central Okanagan who give so much of their personal time and effort to uh, make all of our community events successful. So big shout out. Thank you guys and thanks to the committee for recognizing that with this honor. Have a great evening. Thanks now goes to Fortis BC for continuing to be our sponsor for the Sarah Donalda Treg Gold Memorial Award and the Fred Macklin Memorial Award, which are respectively our Woman and Man of the Year Awards. Here to present these awards from Fortis BC is Shelley Thompson. And now let's meet the three incredible women nominated for the Sarah Donalda Treg Gold Memorial Award. Sarah Donalda Treg Gold Memorial Award. Since 1975, the City of Kelowna has handed out the Sarah Donelda Treadgold Memorial Award, honoring the Woman of the Year. Born in 1883, Sarah was someone who knew the importance of not only giving back to her community, but standing up for what was right. Her volunteer career began by becoming involved in her children's school PTA. Before long, she decided she could do more good if she ran for the office of school trustee. 
1924, she topped the pools, a feat she repeated every election thereafter for the next 23 years. She passed away in 1963. Former city councilor Elise Clark was instrumental in creating this award. The Sarah Donelda Treadgold Memorial Award was originally presented during council chamber meetings before a more formal civic awards event was developed in 1981. Like Sarah, women in this category exemplify what it means to give of themselves for the love of giving, not for any type of recognition, benefit, or glory, but simply because they see a job that needs to be done and dive in with all their hearts. This award in Sarah's honor is to recognize a woman who has given an outstanding voluntary contribution towards the well-being of the City of Kelowna during the year. Sarah Donelda Treadgold Memorial Woman of the Year Award, awarded to a woman in recognition of her overall outstanding contributions to the City of Kelowna, sponsored by Fortis BC. Sarah Donelda Treadgold Woman of the Year Award nominee, Kathy Hatton. Every year, approximately 10,000 people across Canada participate in the Walk to Fight Arthritis for the Arthritis Society. Kathy Hatton apparently takes this very seriously, as during the past four years, she's raised $50,000 and has been among the top, if not the top, fundraiser in Canada each year. In 2015, she managed to single-handedly raise $20,000. Diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and lupus in 2007, once Kathy was released from the hospital, she began to fight back the best way she knew how, by helping others and raising funds. In 2015, she joined the Divisional Advisory Board for the BC and Yukon Division of the Arthritis Society and donates a great amount of time serving the more than 120,000 people in the interior region who live with arthritis. Known as the woman who gets stuff done, she has given countless media interviews and provided motivational and inspirational talks to the Arthritis Society staff. She walks the talk, demonstrating ways which those afflicted can better self-manage their illness and the importance of a positive attitude to help manage chronic pain and fatigue. Sarah Donelda Treadgold Woman of the Year Award nominee, Kathy Jennings. Born and raised in Kelowna, Kathy Jennings has a long history of volunteering to make the city better. In 1970, she began leading and directing Sing Out Kelowna, then spent 10 years volunteering with TOPS, nine of them as president. She spent another three years as a judge for the Lady of the Lake competition and as a host parent to many Japanese children, becoming a second mom to many. She also volunteered as a campaign manager for various city councillors during the past three consecutive civic elections. In 2015, Kathy spent well over 100 hours volunteering as treasurer for the Okanagan Historical Society, where additional tasks ranged from organizing the AGM to planning the old-fashioned Family Fun Day. Another 200 hours went to chairing the Kelowna Kasagai Sister City Association, a group designed to foster friendship ties between the people of Kelowna and Kasagai, Japan. Kathy personally hosted delegates from Japan, in addition to organizing barbecues, Christmas parties, and the very popular Taste of Japan event. Then there are the uncounted volunteer hours, such as driving a neighbor to work every day for two months when she couldn't drive, all of which add up to one remarkable woman. Sarah Tanelda Treadgold Memorial Woman of the Year Award nominee, Lorena Mead. It takes a very special person to work with special Olympic athletes, and luckily for the Kelowna Grizzlies softball team for the past 25 years, that someone has been Lorena Mead. In 2015, Lorena spent close to 650 volunteer hours with these athletes. Their training included gym time as well as on the field, and she arranged competitions against their recreational players and leagues to help her athletes hone better skills. She handled the logistics of getting everyone to provincial and national training camps, sourced out equipment, and then spent two weeks at the Olympics with them. Despite her teaching that winning isn't everything, the team was rewarded with a bronze medal and a BC Hall of Fame spot for being the only team to ever win medals at three different World Games, 1999, 2011, and 2015. Off the field, Lorena helped with passport applications, medications, and filling out forms, then acted as an advocate for the players. She has helped coach, embraced, and loved each and every one of these athletes, helping them learn as much about softball as the life skills most of us take for granted. In their eyes, she is truly special. And the recipient of the 2015 Woman of the Year is Lorena Mead. Congratulations.
Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. What an honor to be one of the three finalists, but to win this, whoo. I'm so excited. Um, I want to thank my husband and my family and friends and everybody who's helped me along the way for all their support and help. To my two fellow coaches, Dennis and Ian, couldn't have got through it without you. And especially to my Special Olympics family and my athletes from the softball team. You guys are amazing. I love you all. Thank you. <laughs>
Fred Macklin Man of the Year Award nominee, Al Strachan. If you've been to the annual Cottonwoods Blossom Time Fair, chances are you've heard the persuasive and charismatic voice of Al Strachan encouraging you to buy a raffle ticket or purchase more cookies. As MC of the event, he's earned a reputation as someone you just can't say no to. Al's second term as president of the Corona Hospital Auxiliary ended in April 2015. Now past president, he's helping to guide and mentor the current executives. He began volunteering with the Auxiliary in 2006, working in the Perking Lot Cafe, and is currently the lead volunteer in the engraving service. He's contributed countless hours to chairing the Christmas Bazaar, and in addition to his work behind the microphone at Blossom Time Fair, he can be found doing everything from lugging boxes to baking cookies, all in the name of fundraising for the hospital auxiliary. Since March 2005, he's put in an estimated 2,000 hours, with more than 260 of those being in 2015. Last year, he was responsible for getting five auxiliaries to join forces and purchase a $1.9 million CT scanner for the Kelowna General Hospital's emergency department. Even they couldn't say no to Al. Certainly volunteerism at its best, and the 2015 recipient of the Man of the Year is Ragwa Gopal. I don't know what to say, and I don't have a speech. So, but I'm very honored, but humbled to receive this award. And I actually am receiving this award on behalf of Ellen Terry, because you both do such amazing work to make our community what it is. So thank you very much. Just having my name in the same line as you guys makes me very proud. Um, congratulations to all of the winners, and to all of the finalists and nominees, in my mind, you're all winners. Without your great work, we would not have a community that we have. And as I look out, <laughs> as I look out in this theater, it seems like my family and friends bought all the tickets. So, uh, <laughs> so good to see my brothers, my nieces and nephews, whole contingent from AO. Okanagan College, so thank you very much for your support. And a very special thank you to my friend Vern Nielsen for nominating me, AJ Gill for having more confidence in me than I had in myself, Gary Benson and Nikki Kelway, thank you for all your help and support. And to my friend Sheldon Gardner, Fred Sarkari, Dr. Mary Barry McGillery, Dave Crisco, <laughs> Lane Merrifield, and Ron Cannon for providing some great references. Thank you for that. I have been to every corner of this world, and I can tell you with confidence, Kelowna is one of the best places in the world to live. And I'm so fortunate that I have this opportunity to live in this community. And the credit goes to a very special couple, and that is Mike and Jackie Schleppi. I came here with nothing, and exactly 37 years and one month ago, Mike gave me an opportunity. And the rest, they say, is history. Mike, thank you for being the best business partner, my mentor, and a friend for life. Thank you very much. And last but not the least, to my greatest cheerleaders, my best supporters, my courage, my strength, my inspiration, and my life, my beautiful wife, Sarita, and my kids, Amy and Ron. Yeah. 
Thank you all. Good evening and God bless. And now we are at our final award presentation of the night. It's the Anita Tozer Memorial Award, and it's presented to an individual or group in recognition of an extraordinary and positive contribution to the quality of life here in Kelowna. Helping to present the award tonight is her granddaughter, Laura Tozer. So please join us on stage. We would also like to now invite Mayor Bazran and all of the city councillors in attendance to come on up here on stage to help make this very special presentation. Good evening, everyone. And while uh, we're having council just up on stage, what a speech by Ragwa, that was unreal. Um, but how about a round of applause for all the nominees and winners again tonight? So in order to win this next award, it needs a, a unanimous vote of council, and I can tell you it was a very easy decision to make for all of us. And, uh, and so it, it is with, with all sincerity, I'm honored on behalf of my council colleagues uh, to announce, and, and what I'll do is I'll announce the winner, and then while that person is making their way up, I actually have a, a very impressive biography to read uh, while they're making their way up. But it is my honor to announce the winner of the Anita Tozer Award is Sharon Shepard. Anita Tozer Memorial Award. There was only one award handed out each year. What, st what started as volunteering and activities related to her children quickly grew into a lifelong commitment for Sharon Shepard. Most of it, however, under the radar of the press. As a member of the Kelowna Secondary Schools PAC from 1993 to 1998, Sharon soon became the obvious choice to be named president with her quiet and compassionate leadership skills. During the same time, she decided to help make her neighborhood a better place, joining the South Mission Residents Association, where she was named chair for two years. And in, an, and in an effort to help make skiing more affordable for everyone, she worked as chair of the ski swap for big white ski racers. It was in 1996 when she began to put those leadership skills to use for the good of the city, when she was elected to city council. And it was then that her extracurricular volunteer work came into the spotlight in the media. By the time she was elected mayor in 2005, everyone could see her philanthropic nature. During her 15 years in office, she chaired numerous boards and committees, but the ones she was most passionate about were the 12 years she spent with the regional district, regional parks, and air quality. Since 2011, Sharon has been chair for Catch and has been heavily involved in the KGH fundraising for the new cardiac care unit. She's also been named chair of the Red Cross and Nature Trust fundraising campaigns. An avid supporter of animals and just about any human rights cause there is, Sharon is one of Kelowna's most loved and cherished volunteers. Not only did she pave the way for women by being the first ever female Kelowna mayor, she has stood up for the rights of children, people with AIDS, animals, the arts, and so much more. Thank you, Sharon, for all you've done and knowing your nature, all that's still to come. Thank you. Well, I'm the only one between you and leaving, so I'm not going to take too much time. This is an absolute shock. Um, maybe my suspicion should have been when my husband suggested we come. <laughs> when for so many years he came to two, three, four, five events a week with me, and I think it was a reprieve with him uh, that I was no longer in politics and we didn't have to go to everything. So, Michael, <laughs> You uh, kept a great surprise. Um, first of all, I'm nervous, but I'm nervous about our rockets. Does anybody know the final score? For us? The rockets are coming home to play, yes, great. Um, 
but also a special thank you to all of you, um, the volunteers, many of you in this audience. And if you look at the names that came up this evening from all of those that have received awards in the past, many of those individuals are still volunteering. I saw so many of those names that uh, I know that they're out there doing great work, and some of you are here this evening. I used to uh, give many speeches, and uh, one of the speeches I used to do was around volunteerism. And uh, as a volunteer, I used to compare it to being in the underground, because so many people don't do it because they're looking for recognition. They find a cause, and they work really hard at it, work quietly, diligently, and they get the work done. And that's what's happened in this community. I'm so proud of all of you, and I love this city. And I guess maybe I have to keep writing letters to the editor because then you get announced or uh, acknowledged by council. I don't know. <laughs> Negatively, positively. Um, anyways, I'm not going away, so uh, I still will be, you know, here giving comments on stuff. And uh, thank you. Uh, it's been mentioned by a number of recipients this evening that without our family, our friends, you just wouldn't be able to do the work you do. And I would like to thank my husband, uh, Michael, who's here this evening. And my mom's going to be very angry at you for not letting her know <laughs> that this was happening. Um, anyways, uh, let's give an applause to all of our family and friends who support us in doing the great work we do. And just wrapping up, if you gave, and I used to say, if you would give a dollar value to every hour that an individual provides, even if you gave the minimum wage as, an, as sort of a comparison, the number of tax implications that we would have in this city to get the same work done would be way beyond what any property owner could afford. So we do have an amazing city. Thank you, and thank you, Council, because I know it does take a unanimous agreement to do that. Must have been an interesting conversation. Um, <laughs> oh, darn! Do you, you know, sometimes I'm sure people wish they could hear some of the things that go on in, in those meetings. But anyways, again, thank you, and uh, all have a safe ride home. Thank you. We'd like to congratulate all of this year's finalists okay, and recipients. Kelowna is an amazing community because of your contributions and accomplishments, and now you can add tonight's honor to your list. We encourage everyone to stroll over to Jim Stewart Park, where this year's Civic Award recipients will be proudly displayed all year long. And we said it at the outset, Kelowna is one of the best places to, in the world to live, and you've seen here tonight why. It is the people. We thank you once again. To continue celebrating volunteerism in our community all year long, please check out the City of Kelowna's profile at volinspire, volinspire.com. Try that, and uh, also we also want to thank once again all of our sponsors, all of our presenters. The Kelowna Hostesses, Mark of Distinction, SW Audiovisual for the fantastic AV presentation, and of course for all of you for helping us celebrate such great leadership in our community. All of us certainly hope this inspires you to do more in the world of volunteering as it has to myself and Shanine and to get out there and nominate someone you know to be here this time next year. Once again, thank you very much for coming out. Have a great night and volunteer. Oh, well done. Yeah.